Who want one last trip to the long trail? I'm sure you guys are all well aware of the current situation with the crack demo in Tekken 8. Once again, it's complete madness. Just like the closed network tests, just like the beta, the demo was cracked within an hour of it being released to PC players. You do have some complaints about people playing the cracked and getting good in tournaments and they're gonna show up at Evo Japan and landslide. But regardless of all that, we have an update here from Michael Murray. It's a small update, it's a very mysterious one, but I think the implications of this could be huge. If you think about what happened in Tekken 7, all the madness that unfolded in that game, I wonder how Tekken 8 is going to respond to that. I really see Tekken 8 as like the biggest response to Tekken 7. All of the different combos that was way too long, way too damagey, that stuff doesn't really exist. The flash being nerfed, the hell sweep being changed, snake edges. There's a lot of things that was jacked up in Tekken 7 and Tekken 8 is changing it. But one thing, in my opinion, the biggest thing, bigger than balance, bigger than characters, is all of the cheaters, hackers, and people People plugging that has not been addressed at all and I wonder if the developers have something prepared to do so the cracked kind of falls into the same category because as this video goes on you'll see exactly what uh, avenue I want to explore but for right now let's take it a step back the cracked beta on social media you will find more cracked gameplay than actual normal demo gameplay I seen more Shahid, Steve, and Devil Jin than anything else. There is a tweet here that's pretty insane as well. It says we can actually upload our ghosts to an online site, then download each other's here and play against them. So you can see that they're also establishing a ghost matchmaking kind of system. There were some content creators who was uploading like actual cracked gameplay, whether it be music, whether it be a stage, whether it be actual gameplay of a character. I have not been participating in any of that because I knew Bandai Namco was going to react. One person who was posting the most about the crack gameplay, this person is kind of becoming infamous for having cracks and leaks and stuff like that. The tweet here that got hit, it says demo roster, green is in, red is out. You can't see the image because Bandai Namco took it down, but basically this was showing off the roster and there was green and red circles around every character showing you which characters is playable and not playable. Currently at the time of recording, there's only 18 that's fully playable in the demo and I don't think it will extend beyond that because it's been quite some time since PC players had access and no other characters was cracked since the 18 that was first discovered, right? But once Bandai Namco DMC'd this one account, I started to look around and see what else they were doing. The content creators who was uploading stuff, all of those videos uh, are gone. I don't know if they deleted them or if Bandai Namco striked them, but a lot of it is gone. Of course, you cannot get all of it there's just random channels who's just uploading whatever but some of the big ones are gone and before any of this stuff happened Michael Murray also responded to this whole situation this is why I say it's bigger than what you think Michael Murray was on it as soon as it happened someone tagged him they say Harada Michael Murray and Tekken is it too much to wait for one month and it's a person who is sharing the cracked version of Tekken 8 Literally, a link. You could click it, you could play it, the practice mode, and you can have unlocked characters. So Michael Murray knows that this is something that people are doing. He responds and says, they should probably read the TOS they agreed to. Now, Michael Murray talks a lot about TOS, EULA, terms of service, and a lot of players feel like this is just empty threats, if you will. All talk, no action. The Tekken subreddit had a field day with this tweet and everyone was basically laughing. One of the most upvoted responses to this tweet says the anti-crack measures from the Japanese devs really seem to be no one could do it because it's illegal. And that kind of highlights how players feel about the developers in action. And I think the developers, they are inactive a lot, but they're starting to become more active. I don't know if it's because of the pressure that people are applying or it's because of just how lawless it's getting. You have multiple different tweets from Michael Murray where he's just talking about, like I said, EULA terms of service, but there's no real action that's taken. Of course, you can run off all the content creators because they don't want strikes on their channel or to be blacklisted, but for the majority of players, who is just sharing this stuff willy-nilly all over the Tekken subreddit, what do you do to hold them accountable? The person that was DMCA'd, they say, hey Bamco, I forgive you for the DMCA abuse, but whilst I have your attention, may I ask you about the numerous regionality famous cheater accounts in Tekken that you do nothing about. So first, the first sentence, DMCA abuse. This is not DMCA abuse. 
Bandai Namco has the full right and the full authority to take down anything that's Tekken. They own the IP, they own the game, they can do it. Really, any game developer can. If you go back to the old days of YouTube, like I'm talking like 2014, 13, and 12, people used to upload Call of Duty gameplay and Activision used to DMCA them. They felt like it was copyright infringement and they didn't want people sharing that gameplay on YouTube. Now, of course, over time, this has become the norm. This is where every everyone turns to to find gameplay and that's because everyone realized that YouTube is an asset but don't be confused at any point in time these companies can wipe out all of the gameplay if they choose to this is why every once in a while you'll hear about someone's channel getting completely obliterated EA takes down 60 something videos and the channel no longer exists they have the power to do it whenever they want they just don't do it unless they're really pushed to do it. But the second part about this, this person says, is Bandai Namco going to do anything about the people cheating in Tekken? One image is their account being locked after the DMCA. The other is a screenshot of that they compiled and it's basically just cheater galore. Tekken 7 was riddled with it. You have one there that's a 70 win streak. You have some main man thumbnails in there. This is something that everyone has dealt with and it literally plagued the entire fan base. I've seen so many people say that ranked is pointless because cheaters and hackers and pluggers muddying up everything. This is where we talk about what and if Tekken 8 is going to do anything about this. The last example of the developers taking action against any cheaters and boosters is in Tekken 7 when Lydia came out. Before Lydia came out, once again, you had PC players reaching into the files of the game and they were pulling that character out. Before the character was even released, you had full move lists being uploaded, combo videos. It's just like the crack gameplay, but it's for a DLC character. Of course, they were able to scare off all the content creators and have them get rid of that stuff, but Tekken 8, what I'm realizing is that it's different from Tekken 7. Tekken 7 was massive, don't get me wrong, but the hype and anticipation around Tekken 8 Anything that Tekken 8 does, you just have a lot of people all over it. In Tekken 7, you only had 400 people who were banned for cheating, boosting, and some of those people were also taking characters early. In Tekken 8, it can easily be 1,000, 2,000, maybe even 3, 5. It just seems like more people are getting in on the chaos, and I feel like that's because there's no real repercussions for doing so. A news article here says over 400 players reportedly banned in Tekken 7 with the latest update date due to being found cheating and boosting during ranked. Looking back on this, on a side note, this is probably exactly why they limited the ranked rematches to, to first to three. No longer can you infinitely rematch and they specifically said boosting, but this here when they hit 400 players, this was probably the nail in the coffin that made them make the decision in Tekken 8 to do first to three. But Sidebar over. Once again, at the time, you had Michael Murray putting out some very vague tweets. It says, reportedly breaking the EULA terms after one week ban doesn't sound like a good idea. This tweet went out because there was a lot of people who were unbanning themselves. That is a whole can of worms and something that I didn't even know was possible. Once again, you just talk about the problems that plague Tekken 7 and how will Tekken 8 react. There's more tweets here you guys can pause and read and just see the things that Michael Murray has been saying over the years, but there hasn't been much action. The developers throughout this whole year, they have they said so much about Tekken 8 characters, gameplay, modes, this and that, but they have not said anything about cheaters or people plugging or people hacking. In the beta, I believe there was the capability of to, to plug, um, I don't think that many people was doing it because why would you plug when you're not actually being demoted? You just lose, but you don't lose rank. So it kind of doesn't make sense to do that. But I did hear one or two mentions of people doing it. But here's the thing, right? When a full game releases and people, because people are going to plug, people are going to rage quit, will the developers take action? I understand the EULA, copyright infringement, IP infringement, the TOS. But just saying these things on Twitter does absolutely nothing. DM seeing one person's tweet out of thousands does nothing. Threatening all your content creators and having them not share it or participate also does nothing. The situation has evolved to where players are taking it upon themselves to crack the game, to find things, and then share it. You have whole entire discords dedicated to this. The Tekken subreddit at the height of these moments is filled with it. Like you literally have people say that they 
can't go on social media because of all of the madness. At a certain point, I'm not saying that I want them to do something, but at a certain point, they probably should. Like if you have players saying they can't go online because, you know, crack gameplay or DLC gameplay or leaks or whatever, it's not a good look. Frankly, it's probably embarrassing from like a outside perspective. If this was Mortal Kombat, we would be sitting back laughing like Mortal Kombat devs are stupid, right? But it's Tekken devs, so we really don't say that, but it's the same thing, right? So I just wonder, what will they do? What are they gonna do besides put out empty tweets and then target content creators? Is there a way for them to really target people who's doing these things and Tekken 8 once the game releases?